Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I'm going to get into a review on the Riversong BP Wave Fitness Tracker. Now, as far as this goes, I want to mention a few things before we jump on into the review. First things first is I did get this product for free, as seen here. Uh, I got it so I can just give it to someone else that I know that likes to run and whatever. But um, with this being in mind, I'm going to be brutally honest with the this particular product like I do with any other. Second off is from looking at their reviews on here and other places on other products. I found a lot of people think that these fitness trackers, I don't care if it's this one or a Fitbit or something else, none of these are substitute or substitutable to go into a doctor or the equipment they actually use in the hospitals. None of them, even though this measures your blood pressure and heart rate and, and it looks like it uses the same type of technology that would be in a hospital, whatever. There's no way to guarantee it's correctly calibrated. There's no way in most of these devices like this one to calibrate in the first place in case it's off. And even if there was, you probably don't have the knowledge on how to properly calibrate this stuff. So it's really important to note that this does not substitute going to a doctor. This does not substitute what they have at hospitals and doctors. But it's a great way to look at preventive measures. For example, where it's a uh, heart rate monitor, if it normally says your resting is about, I don't know, say 80, 84 or whatever, and all of a sudden it gives you a steady 50, 40 or something around that. Or if it gives you like an 150 and it's steady, you know something is wrong vastly. It might not be really 50 or 40. It might be a little higher, but something still is wrong, massively wrong. So something that, oh, I actually do need to go see a doctor because of this. If you, if you properly acclimate yourself to whatever conditions that uh, you prepare for as far as, as what you see on this, well, the fact is, is this will be a great tool for you. So with that all out way, what is this actual advice and uh, what was it's called fame? Well, basically what this device is, is a wrist wearable that uh, has several functions with it. Um, it does date time, uh, motion as far as um, walking or whatever, distance calories, whatever, heart rates, sleep monitor, blood pressure, alarm function, notifications, uh, this being um, messages, being a text message, MMS, or uh, Facebook, Twitter, so on, so on, so on. There's, there is a limited amount of applications, and I'll, I'll let you know right now. You can get the actual applications for the device uh, for Android and iOS. So I'll get a little bit more into this in a second or two from now. But um, from here, you can actually calibrate and say, hey, I... I, um, I um, want to be notified by this, this, and this versus everything else. So as far as going further down, it got it has a function into message push, which is basically a, um, hey, uh, I don't know where my phone is, so the device, you can actually press an old button for three seconds, and a uh, your phone will start ringing and acting crazy, so you can actually find it. And then it has a uh, sit, so if you're sitting too long, then it uh, will alert you if, if you want it to. So as far as that goes, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly simple, uh, but it's actually fairly good. It's, it's, it's pretty advanced for what it is. Uh, keep in mind that its price range is around $40 in the United States. If it's prime, if it's not prime, then it's $60, but you can pretty much find it all around about $40. So let's get into the uh, requirements. So the main requirements is it requires a Android 4.4 or above and iOS 8.0, iPhone 4S and above. And it's uh, Bluetooth 4.0 enabled, which means it's internet saving 
and it's, it's fairly good on that. So it keeps both your phone and your watch from losing battery. So um, some of the other functions with it, uh, the other features with it is it has a two to three day lifetime, uh, battery lifetime. And I've used this for two and a half days and I found that that's actually fairly accurate. Um, it's actually a little bit more than that. So, um, at two and a half days, I had half-life. Uh, so, so you know, it can probably go on for about four days or something close to that. And um, as far as the uh, waterproof, this is a major one that I want to get into. Um, it's not actually waterproof. It says it's life waterproof, and that's just a marketing term, a BS marketing term. So just note that. I'll explain a little bit more in a second. But uh, this is a major thing. If you actually look at the uh, reviews and stuff for Amazon, um, a lot of people are, are wondering about that. In fact, let's uh, let's jump into that right now. So as far as this, because in case if you can't read it for some reason, I know it's blurry and whatever, but this is directly from their manual. It says water resistant. You may wear and use Wave BP during exercise. Exposure to sweat is okay in the rain and while you're washing your hands. And be clear about rain, it's like sprinkle or normal rain, not, not this heavy monsoon type of rain they see in tropical places and other places. But to take a, a bath, uh, go scuba diving, or any other activity where it is submerged, it is not okay. It is not recommended. So as far as that's being said, you can't go, or you shouldn't go swimming with it. You, uh, it, it says right here, don't take a bath with it. Um, you know, don't don't go scuba diving with it. Don't go in swimming in pool. Stuff like that. So, again, 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 the waterproof, it says, yes, life waterproof. That's a BS marketing tool, a BS marketing term. So, as far as that goes, that's just something that you got to notice, and you're probably going to see it once in a while. But with that being said, I'm not, I'm not trying to push people completely away from this watch. In fact, it's actually not a bad watch in itself, but you need to note these marketing little tricks that they got going on. And uh, th this is actually something that would mess up or someone because it, you know, it says, yes, life proof, uh, life waterproof. What, the, what does that mean? When it says yes, and most people hear, oh, life waterproof. Oh, that means I can go swimming. I, I just can't, you know, dive 300 feet under the ocean. Well, the fact is, is you can't even get more than a foot without having problems. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more on that. So, as far as this, um, the actual screen on what it looks like, um, I'm going to show in the corner the actual pictures I took. And some of them are very blurry. So, I figured I might as well show their actual professional photography-based pictures. And that way you can actually see something worthwhile. So, um, as far as the first one, this one is actually very clear, so I might show it full frame. Um, basically, what we got at the top is you got a battery on the top right. You got, of course, it's, it's Bluetooth. And then down below, it's, it tells you the time and dates and the actual day itself. So, Friday and this being the case. To mention something right here is where the Friday is or the FRI. If you tap that, that is a capacitive touch button. Um, you, you won't be able to tell from just looking at it. It's, um, it's like a glass interface or something of this nature. But it's a capacitive touch button. So getting into the, to what we were talking about before, uh, when I was taking a uh, shower with it, uh, you know, just uh, sounding life waterproof stuff, the uh, water going from my skin to the actual button it started triggering that button quite often. So, yeah, that's kind of why you can't go too deep with this thing at all. Wash your hands, whatever, fine. And you'll find the same problem there, too. So, going uh, further more into 
is uh, the first option, and keep in mind uh, when you're actually tapping that button, the, uh, the capacitive touch button, if you just tap it, it will go to the next mode. And um, some of these, if you press and hold it for a few seconds, something will happen. I'll explain a little bit more of that. So as far as the uh, first mode, which will be the time and date, the second mode, which will be the running or walking, how how many steps have you taken? Following that is how far have you walked? Following that is simply how many calories have you burnt? Then following this is the blood pressure monitoring. It, um, this takes a few seconds to actually read out something, so just note that. Um, even on a manual it tells you this, but um, it's just something worth the notes that it takes a few seconds to read out. Then following that, the, it has the um, heartbeats, the beats per minute, and um, that takes a few seconds to stabilize. Then following that, it tells you the actual how long have you slept for during the last sleep section. And keep in mind that these things reset um, after midnight, so after the day is over. Then uh, following that, we have a ability to make the... Uh, so instead of having the numbers being vertical like you've seen or stuff being vertical, you can make everything horizontal. So some people like that. I don't and then this is not an advertised feature but uh, basically if um, you lost your phone if you press and hold the button for three seconds the actual device will tell your phone to start ringing or doing some crazy stuff and that way you can find it which is kind of a cool feature and then uh, lastly, we have the power button and basically pressing all that for a few seconds and you can power this down. That way, if you go swimming or take it off for some reason, you know, you can take it off and uh, not worry about the uh, power. So as far as that goes, uh, going into the actual functionality into this, the um, how it works with the blood pressure, uh, just the uh, surface layer on how it works with the blood pressure heart monitor, is it projects light on the skin and it has a camera that it, the light feeds into it. Exactly how it works, I'm not exactly sure, but I've seen the exact same type of technology. When I was in kindergarten, I got my tonsils taken out and the exact same technology. I, I saw them uh, before they knocked me out put that on my finger um, when I was going for that surgery. Well, this looks to be pretty similar. Again, keep in mind that this, um, you know, it's not a substitute for medical devices, but it seems to be the same thing. Uh, so just note that it's going to shine out green lights and it will take it into the actual camera in the middle. And it gets very freaking bright, kind of... Um, Something to not look into. Something I wish they warned about. Um, because I didn't even know it shined light in the back. And uh, I was looking directly into it. Uh, not knowing what it was. So yeah. That's something I, I kind of am ticked about. But you know it happens. But anyways as far as that goes. Uh, the, the other thing before I forget. Is charging. Uh, while we're in the watch phase. Is uh, as far as how do you charge it. One the band, specifically the one with the holes in it, you pull the band down and it, a, a USB plug-in will be revealed. You plug that into USB on your computer or a wall outlet or something like that, and it will charge it up. It will charge it up within around 90 minutes, and um, again, that will last for about two to three days or, or more in some cases. So note that. Now, as far as that goes, um, let's talk about the looks of the actual product itself and um, the feel of it. I want to tell you right now, going into this, I knew this was going to happen, so it's not a surprise, surprise. Um, and it's obviously made out of plastic, so you know, no fault on the makers of this. But the thing is, is it disappoints me that pretty much all of these fitness trackers that you can find 
None of them look good in business wear. None of them. They all look like toys. Someone, a few people have said that it looks like work release bracelets from jail. I wouldn't say it goes that far, but it does look like toys. They need to make it out of uh, the, the band of it, out of wood and or, or plastic. Uh, I'm sorry about that, wood or metal. Um, and then on top of that, this is the part where I knew coming in. I don't know what exactly about plastic or rubber watches that I can't handle. But on my skin, it, it something happens where my skin reacts negatively to that type of stuff. And um, it's even in my eye. If um, like I can't even wear contacts because my eye will literally deteriorate um, trying to get the thing off. Where the thing has been off my wrist for about six hours. And I still have a ring all the way around my, my wrist because of it. With that being said... This has been since, you know, I was, I was a little kid that I can't wear these things. And um, if you are the same way, um, like you get the similar type of reaction on wearing these type of things, uh, uh, anything plastic, and it will um, do this type of stuff to you, uh, then, you know, it, it's, it's kind of obvious that um, what's going to end up happening. So just note that, um, and and I would really, if if the makers of this, uh, I know the marketing person is probably going to look at this and probably be horrified with what I say, but I don't care. Uh, but if the makers are, uh, of this, uh, the company or any competition or anyone else is planning on getting into this type of stuff, make the band out of metal. Stainless steel is cheap. It actually looks pretty good in business wear yes you can't do anything about the interface as far as the actual uh, screen on it it's still going to look somewhat childish but as far as the overall looks it doesn't look like a kid's watch let's put it that way um, if, if I'm wearing a business suit or if I'm going out in the business type of environment I don't want something that looks like a kid's watch I want something that actually is metal or wood and yes you can make wood watches there is companies out do that but I, I never seen a fitness one that does it be the first so as far as that goes um, and I might do reviews on them because I got a few wood watches so as far as that goes um, let's get into the actual application because this is actually where the thing shines so real quick, the application, you can get it from Android or Apple's App Store. I'll leave a link down below. These are free applications, so feel free to take a look at it and uh, play with it. If your device, your phone does not even support it, then there's no point in even getting this watch. But it does have quite a few good features on it, and it is worthwhile. Now, as far as the application goes itself, trying to uh, jump on into quick video I made of it so going into the app, actual application itself on the first page you have the um, dashboard this actually shows multiple things just at a quick glance so first off the steps how many steps he's done in total the uh, sleep time being so for me it says 9.3 hours I'll explain why this is not accurate and also why the, the steps are, in fact let me explain that right now uh, while I'm on top of it so I don't forget the reason why steps, um, the pedometers for a wrist is not a good idea is simply that studies have found that if you simply have someone run or walk with a wrist-based pedometer, the thing will be off normally around 11% in best case scenario. If the person is doing something else, like say for example, I don't know, lifting things up or doing things or whatever it is, the thing can literally be off in the 60 to 80% mark. I literally sitting at my desk, the thing said I ran a thousand uh, steps. 
No joke. And then me getting up, walking all around, and doing whatever I need to do, and coming back, it said I didn't make a step at all. I didn't I didn't walk at all. Okay, so what should you look into if you're going for pedometers? It needs to go on your foot. The hip ones are off also. Not as much. Um, so with the wrist base, 11% is off. With the uh, hip ones, is around 5% off or a little bit more than that, depending on the model and how you put it on. There's a lot of tolerance on that because each person can put it on a little differently. Some put it in their pocket, some put it on their hip or whatever. Then you got the ones on your foot, and that's that's um, well within the 2% to even point something percent off. The most accurate ones are the ones that goes in the shoe. So stuff like Nike Plus, where it goes inside of the shoe, has an actual uh, space for it, or, or uh, so- something of this nature. If it sits on top of the shoe, it could be a little bit off, uh, especially if the thing bounces. But with that being in mind, if, you, if it's very stable, very much on the shoe, it will be very right on how many steps you've taken. Keep that one in mind. That that's a very important thing to note if you want an accurate readout. Because uh, keep in mind, it's 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 not the uh, the the company didn't do anything wrong. River Song did not do anything wrong. Uh, Fitbit or whatever that makes wrist bear wear type of stuff did not do anything wrong. This is just a limitation in the actual technology. It's the exact same type of technology, whether it's in your shoe or on your wrist. Now, if it's on your shoe, the only moment it will actually really detect is when you're stepping or maybe some vibrations of something, maybe a train passing by or something like that. Fine. But when you're stepping, that's the only real stuff that it will detect your wrist you do all weird crap with it and if you're like me then if the thing might not even detect that you're walking and you've been walking for past 10 hours the fact is is the wrist is the worst way other than putting it on your head is the worst way to actually track your steps you got to keep it on your foot or closest to your foot as possible. That's just a simple fact. This is a great device for heart monitoring and blood pressure and stuff of this nature. A horrible device for steps. Um, And it's not the maker's fault. Again, it's just a limitation of the technology. So jumping back on on into the video. So scrolling on down the app. You can see the uh, it has a heart rate, blood pressure, s- sleep, and whatever will go through it. But going into the uh, blood pressure real quick, it uh, automatically checks your blood pressure once an hour. And that's where those little lines are, it's the lows and highs. And it will tell you the uh, measure time, um, and it will tell you how, uh, how, how well is your blood pressure during that time, which is actually not that bad, and it tells you how... Um, you know, severe it is. So, and you can select by dates and it will tell you, okay, whatever. Then you can do a manual test, which you see here. And it basically just, um, you know, it, it looks at your blood pressure. Down on the bottom, you can scroll that a little bit as you see there. But as far as this goes, basically, um, th- this is a simple way of, of manually seeing where your blood pressure is at at the time so if you're done running or rowing a boat or whatever it may be then you can see okay uh you know my blood pressure is this much and and i need to keep it below this much because the doctor says or whatever it may be so just note that and as you see here the uh thing once it's done it gives you the final readout so for me it's 115 over 78 and you can save the data or not. Save the data adds it to the uh, chart, the uh, lock. And uh, going back, you can actually see it 
added. That way you can actually take a look at it. And notes if you press export, that will come up. But um, going into the uh, heart rates real quick, as you see here, just like before, we got the times. This is checked uh, by itself every half hour. And uh, and I wanted to jump, jump in real quick. We might saw 109. I actually stepped on a uh, bee. And I have a bunch of beehives, and I stepped on a bee, and um, you can actually see the time <laughs> that happened. But uh, just testing the stuff, you can see that it's fairly quick. Uh, this does not log it uh, as far as um, you can see what your uh, uh, beats per minute is. And one thing I would tell you is give it about 20 seconds or so, and it will stable out. So going up a little bit more into sleep, I found that this isn't that accurate. See, um, what I found is um, today, this was today, I got up around, in fact, I fell asleep around 4, I think, maybe 3 or 4. And I got up around... 10 I think uh, or 10 30 and I woke up uh, two or three times oh uh, uh, kind of on purpose for some weird reason I'm able to do that to where I'm able to you know force myself to get up um, but I got up two or three times not getting out of bed but um, finally got out of bed around 10 30 well the thing here is it says I, I, I didn't awake or didn't uh, you know awake times it didn't have any, and the truth is I had like two or three times or whatever. And um, the wake time, it says it was an hour or so after my actual wake time was. This in itself, and also the fall asleep time is, is much earlier. This is um, telling me something. Um, it's not 100% right, obviously. I think what it's using is blood pressure and, and heart. Um, okay, you uh, stop moving around and whatever, but you you know you you heart rates and blood pressure and whatever it showed that it's it's lower during your sleep, and um, it takes twenty four hours to forty eight hours to figure out this. So that's one thing to note, but. I think the reason why the wake time is wrong, I don't, I don't know about the fall asleep time because I was watching TV up to like three o'clock in the morning. Um, went, actually laid down about two and and three o'clock and went to sleep. Well, the thing is, is uh, the wake time. I tend to literally wake up and go immediately to my computer so I could check my emails and do business stuff and 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 school stuff and whatever. And um, as far as that goes, I think the reason why it thinks I was still asleep is because my blood pressure and heart rate and stuff like that hadn't got up yet. Um, so that's something to note. It's it's not really that accurate in that perspective, but I'm not 100% sure if that's the reason why it's not accurate or it's maybe something else. But as far as just a general look at it's not that far off also. Um, yeah, the wake times it was a little bit off, but, um, you know, I don't toss and turn. I just kind of get up and do whatever. So going a little further, you can see the uh, previous day, and um, I think it's about the same as it tells you about the same on the uh, sleep time and whatever. So as far as that goes, going into the steps, it tells you the how many steps you've taken. Again, this um, is the pedometer. That's where the pitfall comes in play. So it has a run feature, and this I'm not going to show because it shows the actual map, but it shows where you run and the times and whatever. So going into the actual settings, it um, if you go to the top, it it, it allows you to actually go into the settings for the device itself go into the message notification you can actually see the um, it, it allows you to view on the watch it has a vibration on the watch but view on the watch any phone calls any messages uh, WeChat QQ Facebook Twitter WhatsApp on there I wish that they added things like um, email 
because I get emails out through the day and I kind of have to respond to them fairly quickly, business and, and jobs and school and, and whatever. But, um, you know, it's, it's something they can add, but that's uh, just an air layer of, hey, this is not business watch. So going a little further, um, going a little further into alarms, note that there's no way to add more alarms, but you can change the alarm, uh, at least not add more alarms there. So out sitting is basically um, how long you are okay with sitting down. You get pair of devices, switch setting. Switch setting is basically saying that you, tw uh, twist turn is basically light up. Uh, wear detection is saying, hey, are you even wearing the device? Um, and it will, it will use lights. Uh, basically, if, if it shines back, hey, you're wearing a device. If it's not being shined back, the green lights is not being shined back, then obviously you're not wearing a device. So from there, you got also the uh, heart rate monitor and blood pressure automatic detection. Again, heart rate is every half hour. Blood pressure is every hour. So going a little bit more into it here, you got take a photo, which is basically touch a thing, you know, take a photo. And then you have the BP test, which is, you know, your your ratings, the reset password, a firmware update. And there was an actual update for this device. Um, the actual, th this is how you actually update the watch itself. And um, I suggest if you do get this device, run through the update first and that'll get you the um, ability to find your phone and, and probably a few other things, probably fixes a few other things. But as far as that goes, uh, going out a little, it, you can set up goals for uh, sports, uh, sleep, units, uh, feedback about, and um, you can go into the we run, which, whatever we run is. And um, as far as that goes, that's uh, pretty much about it. Um, and uh, the app is very simple, very easy to use, and notes that you have uh, many other things that um, third-party apps that you can actually use this watch with. Notes, um, the third-party apps have to be able to communicate with the watch, so not all third-party apps can. So it's going to be a hit or miss on that type of subject um, on which third-party app you use. I would, I would suggest using the first-party app for this particular one because it's actually not bad app as far as itself goes um now as far as that goes getting into um who do i think this device is really for or who would benefit i think it will obviously benefit with a avid runner or something of this nature i honestly wouldn't give two craps about it if um i can get a device like this that was central focus on the monitoring blood pressure hearts and stuff of this nature and it actually had a proper wristband and proper you know stuff around it so it actually looks business-like but it won't tear up my skin well i probably would get it the fact of the matter is is this is not a bad watch if you wanted to keep in mind your blood pressure and your heart rates and stuff of this nature it is definitely not a bad watch when it comes to that but um, as far as being central focus around running, again, with the pedometer stuff, with what I know, I can't advise it truly for anyone like that if, if that's the sole reason why you want this. But if, if, if uh, you want it for the heart rate or if, uh, if um, the heart rate's blood pressure is attractive to you, I would say this is actually worthwhile to take a look at. Now, with this being said, again, the device is on Amazon. I'll have a link down below to it. And it is going for, in, in the United States, around $40 on Prime and $60 without. So obviously, you can find it on eBay and whatever else. But um, also note that this comes in purple, blue. Try to show the colors real quick. Purple, blue, and uh, black. Two and black. I don't see a difference between black two and black. But um, just note that. So you got a little bit of variety right there. 
So as far as that goes, if you've got any questions, anything else, then feel free to let me know, and I'll try and answer as quickly as possible. And uh, leave a like, subscribe, share, and, and let me know what you want me to review in the future. See you next video. Hope you have a great day.